The Lord be with you. It is good to be back this morning. I invite you to turn with me in your copy of Holy Scripture to Genesis chapter 1. We'll be reading Genesis chapter 1 all the way through, then chapter 2, verses 1 through the first part of verse 4. If you were here with us a week ago last Wednesday, this will sound familiar to you, but uh, I will say just as a plug for Wednesday night, this next Wednesday night we've, we've begun uh, a sort of a series listening to the what we call the primeval stories of Genesis, and we began a week ago last Wednesday with this text, and then this coming Wednesday uh, we'll be looking at Genesis 2, but um, I promise it's not a verbatim repeat of a week ago, but this is our text this morning, Genesis chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, Plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image, in the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. 
God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. May God bless the reading and the long hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? And now, O oh God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, help us, O oh Lord, to hear what you would have us to hear that we may do what you call us to do so that we may be the people you call us to be. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, when I was in the 10th grade, I took advanced biology with Mr. Bowden. You know, it sounds smart, right? Advanced biology. Uh, but when you took it with Mr. Bowden, it wasn't that advanced. <laughs> Uh, to be honest. He had a little uh, platform at the front of class, had a sink in it. Uh, we, he, I think he thinks he was being smooth, but we all knew he kept his dip cup in the sink. Uh, and sometimes he wouldn't even pick it up. He just would like, look over there and spit in the sink. Um, but I remember the first day in Mr. Bowden's class, uh, we got our textbooks. I remember what they looked like. I can see them now. Big things. Kind of tan colored. Uh, on the binding said biology. On the top cover, across the top said biology. And there was a picture of a sea turtle. Kind of like you were looking down on it. The shell of the turtle, his head, four flippers, a little remnant of a tail. We always had to turn in our books to the very back cover. And on the inside there was a big stamp, I guess, the school system or the school put on there. And we'd have to write our name the day we got the book. And then at the end of the year we'd have to have it initialed that we turned it back in. But on the front cover of that biology book, big orange sticker, probably five by eight inches, bright orange, couldn't miss it, big bold type in the cover. Said something to the effect of, this is a science book, but all the things in here are just theories. There are other ways of thinking, other ways. Be mindful of those. I mean, it might as well have said, don't listen to your teacher, right there in the cover. It was one of those things, still happens all the time, especially out in places like Texas, where, you know, Texas, I don't know if you know this or not, they control the textbooks out in Texas. Biggest state school board, they get to control what goes in our Alabama textbooks. I don't think the Alabama history one, that would be stupid. But anyway, but that's what it happened. There was this big movement, right, to put, make sure in our science books we understood that Genesis is out there somewhere, so what's in the biology book, May or may not, it's just a theory, that's what we said. Now, I wasn't a Christian then, I am now, and I think to, to whittle down Genesis to this sort of an issue robs it of its power. It robs Genesis of its power to say, this is some sort of historical step-by-step -step account, and whatever you read in science class, whatever they say on the Discovery Channel, whatever Neil deGrasse Tyson may tell you is not true. It's the step-by-step -step in Genesis. Now, I'm here to tell you I'm no scientist. My interest in astrophysics is a hobby at best. Just sort of read stuff. Oh, yeah, big word. Don't know what that means. Moving on. And, and, and I, I tend to sort of focus my theology around the incarnate God found in Christ more than, well, what does the words say? But I think it is worth pointing out that in Genesis, 
the writers and the compilers of Scripture place this story in there for a reason, to teach us something. Now, you can read it as we normally do to look at, look at every day in Scripture. On the first day, God created light, and He separated the light from the darkness. But He didn't create it out of nothing. In the beginning, we are even told God's ruach, God's spirit hovered over the waters. In the ancient world, water is a scary thing. You didn't turn the tap on and get it and subdue it. Water was scary. Water was where the monsters are. Water is deep. You can't reach the bottom of the... People couldn't swim. In fact, scary people came from the water. Scary people who were people of the sea, or, or in their language, the Philistines, came from the water. Scary things came out of the water. You didn't fool with the water. But in the beginning... When God created the heavens and the earth, where's His Spirit? Oh, it's over the water. Because the water is chaos. God isn't so much building a house stick by stick from the foundation. God's more like in the story in Genesis, like the teenager's mother who walks into the room, a pile of laundry, some of it's dirty, most of it's dirty, all of it's dirty. Some of it's not as dirty. So what do you do? You, okay, that's dirty. You put that over there. That's not as dirty. You, you start sorting it out. And then, oh, what, what's this on the floor? You pick up the books. You put them back on the shelf. You take the sheets off the bed. Probably hadn't been washed since they were bought. Take the sheets off the bed. Put new sheets on. Make the bed. Straighten out the curtains. Put every, you, You're straightening it. You're cleaning it up. You're making some order out of the chaos. That's what God's doing. There's chaos. God's going to put it in order. And so God makes light. Can't make, you can't put things in order without some light. God separates the light from the dark. That's the first day. Evening and morning. It's the way Hebrews keep time. Evening and morning. Day starts when the sun goes down, not when it comes up. That's the first day. Second day, God swells up a dome in the middle of it. Now this water kind of getting in the way, just swells up a dome. A firmament, the King James says. But I don't use that word every day. I don't know if you do or not. Maybe you do. But he swells up a dome. And then in that dome, he puts water over the top, calls it a sky. You look up at the sky, it's blue. What color is the water? Well, blue. Well, we know the water's blue because the sky is blue. But they thought the sky is blue because the water's blue. So I swell up a dome. God puts water over it. Second day. Third day, God makes the dry land appear. Let's get the dirty laundry out of the way. Move the water back. Move it back. Move it back. Let's gather it over here. Call it a sea. Gather up the dry land. Call it land or earth. Let's stick some plants on it. The roots will keep the dirt from going down into the water. That's the third day. Fourth day, puts lights, the stars, the sun, the moon. Fifth day, the birds and the fish. Then the sixth day, all the animals, cattle, looks around and goes, this is pretty good. But then for some reason, in Genesis 1, verse 27, it breaks into poetry. Everything else up to this point is Hebraic prose, but not verse 27. It's poetry. God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. He looks around, sees everything he's created. Let us make humankind in our image. Adam, people. Let's make people in our image. We can get hung up on that, say, well, it's the Trinity, or maybe it's a heavenly host of angels. I choose to see what God is actually talking about here. God creates humankind poetically and blesses them. And he looks around, sees all that he's done. And indeed, we're told in verse 31, it was not just good. It was what? Very good. All the things God created. It wasn't until the sixth day. The jewel in the crown. Humankind. He looks around, and it's very good. 
Now, the sermon I was tempted to preach comes next. God makes everything on the seventh day, looks around, says, Thank God, take a day off. I was tempted to preach it because, because I think we need to hear it. But see, I need to hear it too much, and so I thought I might back off a little bit. You see, God rested on the seventh day. That's not Sunday, by the way. That's sundown Friday, sundown Saturday. God rested on the seventh day. said, did a good job, need a break. God doesn't sleep in this time, just makes a day, there it is. But on the seventh, he rests. And for some reason, we now think we don't need to do that. Oh, we can work eight days a week. Let's go. Man, we got ball games to go to. We got, we got vacation homes to go to. We got stuff to do. We got jobs to do. We got all this stuff. We don't need to rest. We don't need a break. I'm as guilty of it as any. I got a paper to write, got a sermon to preach, got somebody to go visit, got something to do. Always, always, always. Do you know what we say to God when we don't take at least a day? Do you know what we say? I'm better than you. You needed a day. I don't need a day. But I'm not going to preach that sermon. Instead, what I think is worth knowing, what I think is worth noting here, is what happens after God makes humankind. I, I thought about this on, on the ride out to the Rio Grande. The topography changes. Earth gets real flat out towards Texas. You can see for miles. And every night, everyone would go outside, or just about every night. And we, of course, we pull out our cell phones now, but we'd look at the sunset, right? We'd watch them, purple, pink, Orange, beautiful. Coming here, coming home. The sun was going down Friday, or coming up, sorry, Friday night. Big as anything, strawberry moon, big as anything on the horizon. And when I see those sorts of things, I, I say the same thing you do. When you go to the beach, you've eaten all the shrimp you want, you've played all the card games you want with family, and you go by yourself to walk down the beach. And you sit in the sand, and you listen to the birds, you listen to the tide roll in. I say the same thing that you say when you go up to Gatlinburg and ride through the mountains, or hike up Mount Chihaw and come to that clearing, and it looks like you can see for miles, or up on Klingman's Dome as you watch the mountain and watch the, the, the clouds come in and settle down. I say the same thing that you say. I see that. When my flowers bloom in the flower bed, when I hear the birds sing, I say the same thing you say. How can anybody see all of this and not think there is a God? But God created all that stuff. He created that sun that comes up in the morning and goes down at night, leaves those streaks of purple and orange so pretty in the sky. God created those same flowers, that same ocean, that same mountain, those clouds, trees, everything that causes us to catch our breath. God created all of those. And then he said, that wasn't good enough. And he created humankind. And so I can sit on that beach and watch the sun go down and think, how can anybody see this and not think there's a God? And I can get up and in my thoughts, in my heart of hearts, I can say, as I watch that bum on the beach, look at that old drunk, old sorry fella he is. I can drive down the road and watch that strawberry moon come up and take that interstate exit, and there's the man sitting there, cardboard sign, probably goes out every day, Every day, begging for money, tapping on the window. Mister, mister, can I have a dollar? Can I have it? I just need a little bit of money. And I roll my window up. Sucker ought to get a job. Sorry, fella, he is. I can ride up to Gatlinburg, hike up the dome, and watch the clouds come in over the mountains, and then turn on the news and see those people. And say to myself, I wish they'd get it. I wish those people would come around to my way of thinking. I wish those people would just straighten up. I do it. Every time. I marvel at the majesty of creation, and I miss it when it's right in front of me. I miss it. 
when it has legs and arms and bones and body and flesh and breath. And it's not just any breath. It's the breath of God. I can marvel at all the majesty of creation and miss what God has right in front of me every time because it looks different. It's not the way I think it ought to be because it's somebody else and they're not like me. But God, God made them. Him, her, whomever, in God's image. And I can miss it. But the book says, in the beginning when God created, doesn't matter how, I don't know how. I don't know if it was six days. I don't know if it was like in Genesis 2 where God made us out of dirt. I don't know if there was a big bang, if there was something else. I don't know, and honestly, I don't really care. Because all I know and all I do care about is that in the beginning, God created. And the book says, when he looked around, after he had made humankind, God looked around and saw that it was very good. I pray I come to a point where I do the same. Let's pray. Eternal God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, our friend, the one in whose image we have been created. Help us, God, to see that image in every every person who crosses our path. Help us, God, to recognize that even in the one we may deem the lowest, we may find your image, the jewel in the crown of creation. Help us, Lord, when our breath is taken by the beauty of grand vistas, when our hearts seem to almost stop, and we are overtaken by the glory of creation. Remind us, O God, that while that is all good, it is in our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, that we see your image, and that, Lord, is very good. Help us, God, to recognize you as the creator of the cosmos, the creator of our neighbors, And help us, Lord, in that respect to live into the great command you give us. To love you and to love them. So, holy God, be with us now as we sing together. May your spirit stir in our presence. And may you call us, Lord, ever on to make whatever move and decision you have us to make today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.